Anthony Fauci is testifying at a fiery congressional hearing this Monday morning. The former head of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases at the NIH and ex-medical advisor to the president is speaking on the origins of COVID-19 before the GOP-led House Select Subcommittee on the Coronavirus Pandemic. This will be the first time that he speaks before Congress since retiring last year, and it follows a pair of contentious hearings before the subcommittee that raised some questions over the level of oversight and conduct that went on in his agency, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Ranking member on the subcommittee, Jamie Raskin, called out the GOP-led effort to implicate Fauci. Let's listen. Now bring you the medical big lie, making the outlandish claim that Dr. Fauci was responsible for causing COVID-19. And here is Fauci himself. In the beginning, it was felt that, in fact, it did prevent infection and thus transmission. But that was proven, as time went by, to not be a durable effect. Yeah, it definitely had a positive effect for many people, especially those that were vulnerable. But we knew from the trials that people that got vaccinated still were subject to getting COVID. So was the COVID vaccine 100 percent effective? I don't believe any vaccine is 100 percent effective. Here to discuss further what is happening at this hearing is Catherine Eban, correspondent at Vanity Fair. So glad to have you back with us. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. So they're covering, you know, a range of topics that Dr. Fauci has uh, weighed in on over the years. Um, I you know, saw some back and forth um, over, you know, his guidance on social distancing and masking and, and how durable the protection for the vaccines uh, was, whether that was going to prevent um, transmission. But of course, you know, the, with the recent um, news that this top deputy of Fauci's has now admitted to thwarting uh, FOIA requests in a way that is, I think, deeply or should be at least deeply legally problematic, if nothing else, you know, changing specific um, uh, characters in emails so that they would not be discoverable by reporters who had questions. Um, uh, you know, all of this speaks to whether Fauci has tried to shield himself from accountability. So I wondered what you make of that line of questioning thus far. Well, look, I mean, there's been a fundamental lack of transparency from the NIH to start with regarding the response to the pandemic, but particularly, particularly regarding the question of COVID-19's origins. I mean, what's very clear to me from my reporting is that Western governments, uh, our own, Canada's, France's, all felt like they had some kind of exposure because of the collaboration that they did with the Wuhan Institute of Virology. That is not to say that our taxpayer dollars necessarily caused this pandemic. There's just way too much we still don't know. But, but, but it's clear that the NIH and the NIAID, which Dr. Fauci led, led um, has behaved in a way uh, in an effort to shield themselves from possible accountability. And that is just becoming clearer with every passing day. What is your main takeaway as someone who's been watching these proceedings closely today? Obviously, we played a couple of clips, but have been uh, filming this morning and haven't been as uh, scrutinized as closely as you have. What, what is the tone here? Are the questions as sort of politically divided as we've come to expect with more sort of supportive, less um, interrogative questions from Democrats versus Republicans. What's the tone been like? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, fiery, um, uh, really uh, lit. Uh, but I do think that there are, you know, very serious line of questions that are being pursued. Um, you know, Dr. Fauci speaks very well. He presents very well. Um, he definitely has his own perspective on this. Um, but, you know, I think there there has been a sense, at least from, you know, Democrats on the committee, that that they they recognize that there are real questions here that need to be asked. Yeah, uh, there was, uh, you know, fury from Democrats um, mm -hmm. over what uh, uh, Morins, the deputy, said yeah. about uh, about FOIA. The, the Biden's own health department has decided to stop working with Eco Health Alliance because of those <laughs> um, uh, the, because of the lack of oversight there. So I was actually a little uh, taken aback to hear uh, Jamie Raskin, for instance, having such a a, a how you know how dare republicans crucify this 
wonderful public servant uh, kind of approach to it. So is it that some Democrats are trying to say that, well, yes, there were problems with with NIAID or with Eco Health Alliance, but those are somehow totally roped off from from Dr. Fauci uh, himself because he's still there's still some media desire. Although I think this is shifting, right, to portray him as this is this you know, perfect pandemic hero. Um, you know, that's not. And anyway, the disagreements over what policies were implemented and all of that. Those are at least policy disagreements. I mean, some of this is right. with the with the cover up and the and the oversight stuff. I mean, this is this is much more basic fundamental potential criminal liability for, um, for, yeah. for people who stonewalled FOIA investigations. Look, th this, is, this is real and this is serious. This is not just, you know, partisan politics. And, you know, watching this and reporting on this, one of the most notable shifts has been that Democrats on the committee are beginning to really take this seriously. Uh, you know, one of the things that's absolutely hindered origin investigations from the start is the lack of bipartisanship you know the the idea that this was somehow just a you know republican uh, crusade and i frankly i think the republicans have been much less effective when they look like they're just nakedly trying to get fauci i mean that has not been productive but the testimony uh, the hearings with Peter Daszak and with David Morins were, in my view, significant turning points because they really clearly laid bare that there was just lack of accountability and lack of any possible insight into what was happening at the Wuhan Institute of Virology and an active effort to evade FOIA requests. Um, uh, so, so. This gets way more serious. Um, it doesn't answer the question about origins, but what it clearly shows is that investigation is required, it's merited, um, and we all have a lot more to learn about what actually happened behind the scenes. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that there is less of a partisan divide, apparently, in these hearings, although mm -hmm. something that just happened is that Marjorie Taylor mm -hmm. Greene um, held up a picture of some dogs, uh, some beagles that apparently been experimented on in a lab, um, pinning, trying to pin animal testing to Fauci. Fauci responded saying, what does dogs have anything to do with what we're talking about today? That does seem sort of like a more attenuated politicized sort of attack. Um, there has also been a lot of discussion around this question he got about whether or not he received any um, uh, pharmaceutical payments, uh, like uh, kickbacks, uh, while he was in his position, and he answered just a flat no. And I see some Democrats saying they're coming for him, but it's not working. He's resisting pretty well. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what do you make of all of that? Yeah, so first of all, Joy, let me just say, I am the most ardent dog lover. Uh, and I put down my beloved dog two weeks ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Ill. So yeah, so I'm an ardent dog lover, but the Beagles, um, you know, who deserved every good thing in the world are a sideshow to the questions that really matter here. And frankly, any question in my view of pharmaceutical kickbacks or I just, that to me is just a political stunt and a sideshow. That is not the central question here. The central question here is research, uh, risky research that uh, U.S. taxpayers funded in part through uh, the NIAID uh, and a kind of research that Dr. Fauci and Dr. Francis Collins uh, had long supported. Uh, but when you pull back the curtain, what we discover is they had much less insight into what was happening in the Wuhan Institute of Virology, what was happening with U.S. taxpayer dollars, whether there was security and safety, whether the uh, People's Liberation Army were, in fact, using some of those techniques to, uh, to pursue possibly military ends. Um, we really don't know the answers to any of those questions, but the point is our own government didn't know the answers to any of those questions when they funded this stuff. Um, and that's really what we need to drill down on because somewhere in there, 
uh, is going to be answers to what sparked this pandemic. And let me just say, I mean, I've spoken with very prominent scientists who are like, why does it matter, you know, whether we ever find out where this pandemic came? And it matters hugely. I mean, it matters uh, for the future. It matters for accountability purposes. Uh, and it matters because how are we going to protect ourselves from the next pandemic until we figure out what caused the last one? Yeah, why does it matter? I've heard that as well, is the most baffling mm -hmm. question of all to yeah. me. If there were no stakes to it, I would still be intellectually curious. Don't you know? Don't we want to understand a, a great and important and destructive events in human history, what caused them? But of course, there also are tremendous stakes. And that's true if it, if it came from you know, an animal wet market as well. That would compel some, some different policies. I think there are certainly legitimate safety questions uh, about those Regardless, you know, both of these uh, potential origins seem seem like things public health policy could confront to leave us all safer and better off. So this this attitude that oh well it doesn't matter I I, I just do not understand it all. Maybe it and, and it it's not even the case that it doesn't matter to these scientists, right? They're saying oh it doesn't matter, but it matters to their to their research and to their accountability. Just just as you said. Well, we will continue to monitor um, this hearing and likely discuss it more in the show tomorrow. Catherine, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me.